don't know if, I don't know if you were there, but I just did a um a topic about Jamaica right here. Jamaica banning music. Banning music that glorifies illegal activity. You know what? It feels like this is the same sort of thing right here. Look, Jamaica bans music and TV that glorifies crime. It seems like this is the same thing. She's going after these same musicians. She's like, if you guys want to come over here and talk all this crime and do all this crime stuff, you're about to get locked up. Yep. So it's wild, man, because I mean, it's like the music industry is, and then you know, I don't even know, I wonder how much, um, what part hip hop police are playing. Yeah, I wonder if we're gonna see a bunch of Takashi 69s coming out because at the end of the day, for her to be going so hard, she definitely has people talking. Yeah, like there's definitely some stitching going on, man. It has to be like, look at this one right here. How Atlanta created a gang stereotype of its hip hop community. So, you know what I'm saying? It's one thing, like, it's one thing for people to have, you know, hip hop police, but she literally turned these crews into gangs. TDE. I'm not saying, yeah. I'm just saying, like, an example would be TDE being a gang. <clears throat> it is, uh, it's new. It's news on the phone. Yeah, so it'd be like, you know, yeah, Death Row. If Death Row was a, you know what I'm saying? It was a gang for show, for show. You know what I'm saying? Death yeah. Row, Death Row, them niggas would have got the, the death penalty if they if they was, if Fonnie Lewis was in L.A. at the time. But yeah, these brothers, man. So it says... Uh, and B.B. Culture asked a good question. He said, he said, why is his off on being pers uh, persecuted so much? I mean, I mean are we making ourselves a target because yeah, because you know? I mean, exactly. the day, all the evidence is in the music, and it, you know what's funny? They're trying to pass that. You know, they're trying to pass that law, right, where lyrics cannot be used against artists. I wonder if that's causing her to move even quicker now. Um. So that that passed. You know what I'm saying? That was headed oh, wow. by okay. yeah, Jay Z and some other people. Mm. Uh, that passed, I but believe. When does it become effective, though? When does yeah, it effective? but. I think that passed on a federal level. So I don't think, you know what I'm saying, oh, inside okay. her jurisdiction, I don't think that has any, you know what I'm saying, because because that's what the YSL uh, RICO is and Meek Mill, yeah. The YSL the YSL indictment is all, is really based on their social media. It's based on their social media and their lyrics. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but just for right. the record, I just want to be clear with you guys. Let me tell you how it's being used. So what's happening is a prosecutor is uh, he has an all-white jury and he's saying look at this guy's music he's rapping about guns over here he's saying blood and slat slat and he's doing all of this but whatever he's rapping about they're using it to disparage his character not necessarily about the crime that he is uh, charged with you see what I'm saying? So, so because he talked about slat, slat and all this stuff and he got guns in his video, it doesn't mean that he shot this man Thursday at two o'clock. That it don't mean it. But if you're outside of the culture and you're, you know, what I'm saying, uh, you know, what I'm saying uh, uh, a grandma, a white grandma, you're just going to throw it all together. So that that was necessarily the law. That was the law right there. You can't use it as a character assassination. Like you can't use lyrics Unless it has to do with a specific crime. Yo, yo, can you see this picture that I have up here right now? Yeah, yep. Yo, man, you, you can see why people want to get these rappers out of here. This nigga Gunna looks like a million dollars. This nigga has diamonds in his shades. He got five yeah, chains crazy. on underneath he has you know what I'm saying he has a mm -hmm. the diamond studded onk he has mad the nigga look like a half a million dollars or more you know what I'm saying these yeah, young niggas is does. shining dog and the prosecutors yeah, yeah. are not making this amount of money they don't have this kind of influence there's a lot of jealousy mm -hmm. Like, man, y'all niggas is over here selling drugs me, and guns and, you know what I'm saying? You got your teeth done. Scamming. They doing scamming. Yeah, uh-huh. And bodies is getting caught. Exactly, bro. So, but at the same time, though, like, think of it. This is gangster music. That's what this is. It's gangster music. Gangster lifestyle, you get shot and go to jail. So, so gangster music yeah. is going to be the same. So, you know what I'm saying? I can't. 
I can't give brothers, I can't say, oh, brothers is being victimized. I can't say that. These niggas is talking about slat, slat, and kill, and this, that, and niggas is doing it. They doing it. You got to be responsible for what you say. At some point, you got to be held responsible for your actions. That's all. Yeah, like Derek said, she definitely wants to make an example out of of them. Like, she wants to set the tone for them. Yes, that's right. So we going after. I'm going after the most, you know, rappers with a lot of influence, and most future, right? And because I mean, they, they come on, though, they have a huge fan base. Yes. And I'm sure that's not. I'm sure there's other people that she has in sight too, man. It's not just them. No, man. That's you right. Know, how far this thing is going to stretch, man? That's right. Hmm. You got to be careful out there, man. They trying to. They. they I saw a video clip with like. I forgot the song and the lyrics, but JC, JZ was basically warning these rappers about repo charges, bro. Yeah. Wow. I want to finish this other one, too. This is another good article. Where is it? Damn, this shit. Oh, here it is right here. So this is this is going back to how Atlanta created a gang stereotype of his hip hop community. Hold on, let me blow my nose. Hold on one second. All right, let's see. So in this article. It's talking about Snoop Dogg's murder was the case. Mac Phillips spent 21 years in jail for a shooting death in 2000 that prosecutors harped on his gangster rap persona. This defendant who did the same, uh, whose message was murder, murder, kill, kill, a prosecutor said, quoting his song featuring Mystical, even though someone else had confessed to the crime. It's taken a new urgency as of late with Atlanta as ground zero for a growing number of gang related cases involving artists. See, that's the thing. A lot that blood shit done moved into Atlanta. Blood crypt done moved into Atlanta. And let's see, Atlanta's the home of hip hop. So it's it's gonna be the home for a lot of the lot of this fuck shit too. You know what I'm saying? Atlanta is the home of hip hop. I've been trying to tell niggas that. They don't want to hear it. But Atlanta is the home of hip hop currently. Currently. You know what I'm saying? All right, so it says, most recently, a 56-count indictment was issued against YSL, a criminal street gang. It says, the latest example of law enforcement focusing its effort on rappers. It's the product of a city that has spent years cultivating a growing stereotype between the hip-hop community and gangs. 2015 uh, attorney. Uh, was representing Offset when he, along with other Migos member Quavo and Takeoff, were arrested on gun and drug charges following a gig at Georgia Southern University. While Quavo and Takeoff posted bail, Offset was denied bond over a past felony conviction. The next month, prosecutors cited social media reports alleging that Offset was the CEO of Black Migos, a local street gang that his group's moniker was allegedly in reference to. In fact, the trio's name was actually inspired by how drug cartels have proliferated the native Gwinnett County. It was the first time that a finally represented a rap artist accused of being a gang member. It really came out of left field, said the attorney. I've known Offset, Quavo, and Takeoff since they were teenagers. They had nothing to do with gang activity. There's just three young men who went to Beckmar High School, started performing together, and became an international success. But Offset's case was eventually dropped after the rapper took a plea deal. It was just the beginning. There's not a day that goes by where I don't get a phone call, email, DM, or a WhatsApp or text message from somewhere in America about a similar case. 
said the lawyer, calling the current gang allegations of targeting black black artists as violations of the 13th Amendment. You see, they're saying black and brown, but I don't I don't see the brown. I took that out because I don't see the brown artists being targeted like we are. <clears throat> Years ago, Atlanta had much um, a different idea of local gang. Those statistics were hard to come by. But it hasn't stopped the police force from making um, statements. Even Georgia Governor Brian Kemp could only find FBI stats from seven years prior. Talking about gangs were a problem in Georgia as a governor that he could fix. Police have noted that uh, how gangs are likely Hispanic or Asian, but that assertion wasn't backed by the data. It says, I have always been surprised, frankly, that the city of Atlanta has not developed big, sophisticated gangs. But in the past five years plus since the offset case, I think allegation of gangs incorporating Rico, but really gangs in general, is the newest iteration of systematic racism in the criminal justice system. Now, and that's coming from Atlanta, who's who's uh, 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 that's a black city. So the, so the justice system, they're saying, you know, what I'm saying. Is black lawmakers and uh, and, and police forces coming up with this stuff. Rico would be the uh, racketeering influence corrupt organ uh, corrupt corruptions act, which the Department of Justice created sixty years ago to uh, get to the mafia, but they use that to go after uh, DJ Drama and Don Cannon Cannon after the career making Gangster Grills mixtape series. They said it was bootlegging digital music piracy. Those offset 2015 case didn't include racketeering charges. By alleging local gang involvement, it became yet another classic example of phenomena described in Eric Nielsen and Andrea Dennis's book, Rap on Trial, which details prosecutors pressing gang charges against rappers to bolster what might otherwise be an ordinary drug case. The wise cell indictment cites lyrics, music videos, social media captions by Young Thug and YSL signees as overt and predicate acts within the RICO count, said Fonnie Willis. So 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 it's new that it, that is right. So she is probably using it. She's probably trying to hurry up before that law becomes in effect. Today, as police claim Metro Atlanta gangs problem to be larger than ever, news reports present rap music as a soundtrack. A flash of an amateur music video introduces interviews with already jailed gang members about the worst crimes they committed and the numbers of folks they recruited. But the video is presented without context. Like whether one of the inmates is holding a gun in jean shorts pocket is actually it. It's star. A separate music video of fewer than 5,000 views became proof of an alleged blood ties in two indictments and totaling 169 counts against 20 people in Cobb County. The mother of one of these suspects was baffled, saying the guns and the money and, and, the, and was all were fake. In 2017, Atlanta Fox affiliate was investigating a spike in carjackings. Police pointed once again to gang violence. It's so much easier to do that. They said uh, brazen social media behavior at the time, but the scene is actually from Sabibi's pull up with a stick video. Why sell indictment isn't even the first time music video was submitted as evidence against young thug. Uh, his manager, his former manager, Pee Wee, was arrested for shooting up Lil Wayne's tour bus. Prosecutors alleged young thugs halftime video was proof of criminal intent, pointing out how Winfrey is seen holding an assault rifle. Thug was never charged for the crime, but Winfrey eventually pleaded and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Yo, niggas be throwing a life away with just simple shit. Not even transplants have been spared in this treatment. So people coming in from out of town, right? Little Dirk coming from Chicago, turned himself into Atlanta police on charges related to a shooting. They said Dirk was involved in, uh, as a gang associate. Oh, shit. Anybody could be a gang associate. But Aurora, his attorney, argued that the police wanted to involve Dirk because of his celebrity status. 
You're not going to win prosecutor of the year or officer of the year by getting some guy off the street that nobody's heard of. This is a feather in our cap. I was a DA and you get hyped up when it's someone famous. You really want to go all out because you want to look good. End quote. Dirk was released on bond less than a month later. Because he didn't dodge the arrest. Dirk moved to Atlanta because he had a bad background. Growing up as a child and my father being incarcerated for 26 years, I had a rough past. Me moving to Atlanta was just getting, you know what I'm saying, start, start all over again, right? Same thing for a Tsunami Surf, right? And with more of his recent song, he comes and says, this is all a prop. This isn't what's whatever. So I guess it's having an impact. Dirk can't be blamed. Last year, before the YSL indictment, named YFN Lucci as a suspect, an alleged rival gang member, and key to the street rapper, had landed his own RICO charge that cited a guest video appearances where he throws up gang signs. Young Mal, uh, uh, the attorney for YFN Lucci, in his pending RICO case, also represent Young Mal, a one-time signee to 1017 Brick Squad, Gucci Mane. Last year, DeKalb County Police issued gang charges against Young Mal and five others for a fatal shooting at a Chevron gas station. But the lawyer says Mal indictment goes far as citing the size of a chain he wore when the history of necklaces and jewelry and hip-hop genre goes back to the beginning, decades. There she is. She's beautiful. Beautiful woman, but she out there, she over there, she trying to lock niggas up. You heard? Uh, so another lawyer, Steve uh, Sadow, he represented uh, Rick Ross, says that Metro Atlanta has a gang presence, though it isn't what Fulton County District Atlanta police have in mind. There is no talk in the Atlanta metro area about racially motivated white nationalist gangs. It's all the black gangs. I think there's some cultural stereotype of young black males. I don't know, man. I'm sure there is, but uh, but. Niggas is gangbanging, man. Like, for real. Like, well, you know what I'm saying? Let's call a spade a spade, man. Niggas out here for real gangbanging, though. But Atlanta continues to lean into that stereotype. Aurora foresees more of its hip-hop stars getting entangled in gang indictments with their lyrics and videos being used as evidence. I would absolutely say yes. They would have to start changing what they're singing about. Matter of fact, what's the name said that? Um, T. Grizzly. He was like, man, we're going to have to, like, change our lyrics up. You know what I'm saying? It was like, you got to put third person or something because this shit not working. You know what I'm saying? Words are powerful. That's what he said. He said words are powerful. So, yeah, man. Little babies, four pockets full. In the meantime, Fulton County District Attorney announced uh, a RICO indictment on a drug rich gang. So, yeah, they got YSL, drug rich gang. Now they're going to come at a homicide, which is Playboy Cardi and them. Once again, invest investigators cited amateur rap lyrics to make their case. Willis defended their tactics, saying, quote, I have some legal advice. Don't confess to crimes on rap lyrics if you don't want them used. Or at least get out of my county. Shit. So there it is, man. That's a great article. Rap music on trial. How Atlanta created a gang stereotype of his hip hop community. Please hit the star and, and a follow on Caffeine. Or if you're on YouTube, and smash the like button. We're putting out good content. If you like the content that is here, go into the description and you will see my Caffeine link. And you will see hours and hours of content right there. Matter of fact, let me show you. Let me show you. How to go to my caffeine and find good content. So you go here, you click on the link in the description, and it'll send you here, or you go to caffeine.tv slash circle seven media, replace the L with a seven. Okay. You go here. And then you you uh you hit uh join the show. Well, if I'm live, if not, you just hit subscribe. 
And then here's all my content. I got hours and hours and hours of great content that you can't find nowhere else. So shout out to Caffeine. Shout out to YouTube. Shout out to everybody. I'm out here. You guys have a great weekend. And uh, yeah, be good. Peace.